This morning on CBS 2 News, the Idaho Supreme Court has a big day ahead. The arguments over abortion related lawsuits they're set to hear later today. Plus the state fighting against fentanyl. What officials in Idaho are doing to curb overdose deaths. Plus helping kids get back to school on the right foot. You're looking live at CapEd Credit Union Branch in CUNA. How you can help local families get ready for the school year. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. We are seeing clear skies out there, less wildfire smoke moving through the region. Some great news overall and keeping with a little bit cooler temperatures, though still going to be in the 90s. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning. Yeah, it is actually very cool this morning. Little to no clouds in the sky. It's pretty dark though, so it's hard to see. But yeah, temperatures are pretty mild right now. 69 over in Boise, 68 in Nampa, and then up in McCall, we are at 56 degrees right now, so definitely a little bit cooler. As for today in Boise, 97 degrees expected as the high. We're going to see mostly sunny skies, and the smoke is on its way out of the Treasured Valley. It's headed east, and we we may see some possible late spot showers as well. Futurecast showing us clouds rolling in Wednesday evening, and we'll see a few spot showers in eastern Oregon as well. Those clouds will roll Thursday morning into the evening as well. Now, high temperatures for today, 97 and 96 in Boise, 97 in Mountain Home, and 100 degrees over in Ontario, and then 86 degrees in McCall. Yeah, still a toasty day ahead. Thank you, Vasily. It is 501 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. No reports of anything to slow you down on your Wednesday commute. But when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn your dial to KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, attorneys for Planned Parenthood will go before the Idaho Supreme Court later on this morning. And this is over two abortion related lawsuits filed over the past several months. Now, back in March, the organization sued over Idaho's newest anti abortion law. Now, that law allows relatives of any woman who seeks an abortion to sue their medical provider for that service. Now, the law prohibits rapists from suing, but it does allow the rapist, the relative's rapist, to then sue. Even though Governor Little did sign the bill, he has voiced concerns publicly about it, including its impact on victims of sexual assault. In June, Planned Parenthood also filed a lawsuit over Idaho's trigger law, which bans nearly all abortions. Now, Idaho passed this law back in 2020 on the condition that it wouldn't take effect unless Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, it was triggered by the recent Supreme Court decision. Now, it will go into effect on the 25th of this month, but Planned Parenthood is asking the Idaho Supreme Court to pause that until after its lawsuit works its way through the courts. And last week, Planned Parenthood also filed a third lawsuit against the state's fetal heartbeat law. Now signed last year, it bans abortions after a heartbeat is detected, which is usually around six weeks, and it makes it a felony for medical professionals to perform an abortion after that point. Now Planned Parenthood wants the state's high court to hear their third lawsuit as well, but at this point, it has not been granted that request. And the U.S. Department of Justice also suing Idaho, claiming these abortion trigger laws violate federal law. The Emergency Medical Treatment Labor Act passed in 1986. It says hospitals must give necessary treatment to a patient before discharging them. They say that includes abortion or any emergency care that a woman would seek. Now that right was reaffirmed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in early July of this year. And stay with us for continuing coverage on these ongoing legal battles over abortion. Today's hearing at the Idaho Supreme Court, it starts at 10 a.m. sharp. We'll bring you the latest on air and online on IdahoNews.com. And for breaking news sent straight to your smartphone, you can download the CBS2 mobile app. Well, fentanyl killing an alarming number of Idahoans. From the law enforcement side, the state, it has a three-pronged approach. Now, one focuses on resources, going after dealers, the second, education, and the third diverts people struggling with addiction to treatment services. CBS 2's Angela Kerndall shows us what the state is doing to help save lives. The state of Idaho lost 152 lives last year to fentanyl, more than three times as many lives lost compared to 2020. We anticipate 
based on the current numbers, that that number is going to increase again. ISP officers in northern Idaho have started a trial diversion program that we could eventually see more of across the state. Instead of putting a first-time offender struggling with a substance use disorder suspected of a low-level, nonviolent crime in jail, ISP officers will divert that person to treatment services instead. Whenever we're given the opportunity to to give somebody help, to provide them with an opportunity to better themselves, uh, it does, you know, it's, it's very gratifying for us. Education efforts have also been ramping up each week and sometimes twice a week. ISP officers in northern Idaho say they're meeting with people in churches and other community centers as well as kids in schools to warn them about just how pervasive fentanyl is and just how easily it could kill someone. Every day. Our troopers around the state are seizing, you know, one or two sometimes, but hundreds uh, more often than not. They're everywhere. Eventually, these talks will be happening in every community throughout the state. We will sit and do these talks with anyone that will sit and listen for 30 minutes to an hour. The state also aggressively going after the dealers once they can directly link to an overdose death. They are tough to do. Most of the cases require us to get an autopsy done, toxicology done, and then direct connection to the person that we believe that are responsible. Those cases oftentimes prosecuted on the federal level. If convicted, that person could face anywhere from 15 to 20 years in prison. When we do work these cases, that we have been very successful in getting not only the cases prosecuted, but also uh, guilty pleas. Turning to wildfire season, the Moose Fire burning over 58,000 acres in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. That's about 17 miles north of Salmon, Idaho. It's sitting around 20% containment this morning. Now that is actually down a bit from last containment update. Now Great Basin Team 1 will take over management of the fire later on this morning. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, school will be back before you know it. That's why CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're teaming up to host a back to school drive. We're helping local families get ready for the school year. And CBS2's Vasily Varlamos, he's live in CUNA this morning with more on our efforts underway today. Good morning, Vasily. Yeah, I'm here on North Meridian Road here in CUNA to collect school supplies with Cap Ed Credit Union for kids in need. Now, these donations will go to the Salvation Army to help families get their kids ready to learn. We know times are tough right now for Idahoans. In a study done by the National Retail Federation, the average family with children in K through 12 plans to spend an average of $864 on school items. That's a $168 increase since 2019. Times are tough right now for everybody, so if parents can breathe a little easier knowing that they have somewhere to go to get their, their kids supplies and not have to worry about that piece and focus on everything else, I feel that that not only will bring joy but also peace of mind to a lot of our parents. We're looking for we're looking for things like pencils, backpacks, pens, binders, notebooks, crayons, anything kids may need for this upcoming school year. Now to donate, you can stop by any Cap Ed Credit Union until August 12th. You can also donate money online if you cannot make it to the store to pick up school supplies. Now we have a link to do that on our website, IdahoNews.com. Now for your weather, we are looking at national highs, very high around the western United States, 106 over in Redding, 103 over in Sacramento, 99 in Medford, and nine, or 87 in Portland, and then over in Boise, we are looking at 97 degrees as the high today. Now over the next few days, we are going to see mostly sunny skies with the potential of a few spot showers. There will be lower smoke conditions as well over the next few days, and we will be hot early next week. Now, future cast shown, we will see showers rolling in Wednesday evening. There's low pressure up north and to the southeast of us, which is causing higher pressure, which could add to the potential heat we are seeing over the next few days. There will be some clouds in the area, however, so it, especially Wednesday evening heading into Thursday morning, but those should clear up heading into Thursday. Now, high temperatures for us here in the Treasure Valley, Boise at 97, Emmett at 98, Ontario's the lone triple digit up 
there. And then McCall is at 86 degrees, Stanley at 82, and Idaho City at 91 degrees. Now, for your five-day forecast, we are going to see temperatures start to rise over the next few days, 97 today and 99 on Thursday. But heading into the weekend, we should see it cool off just a little bit. Friday will be 93 degrees as well as Saturday, and then Sunday will jump up to 97 degrees. Now, we will see some heat heading into early next week. I can let you know a little bit more about that here heading into the extended forecast just in a few minutes. But as for the next five days, we will see temperatures in the 97 to 99 range heading into the weekend. We will cool off a little bit, however. Can't complain with that forecast. Thank you, Vasily. It is 510 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, no reports of much happening out there to slow you down this morning. Great news there. So when you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi makes the trip to Taiwan. How China is retaliating after warning the U.S. not to visit the island. Plus, a bill set to help our veterans passes the Senate. A look at the PACT Act as it heads to the president's desk. And don't forget about our question of the day. It's time for that. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. It was a hard one. Only 20% of men do this every single day. That answer, housework. Yeah, I was going to say, we might need to bump that up a little bit higher, men. All right, now for today's question. Americans purchase two billion of these each and every year, and not a single one will be recycled. All right, folks, what do you think it is? This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 514 on your Wednesday. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi departed Taiwan early this morning after receiving a warm welcome from government officials, including the nation's president. Now, the trip has riled China, which considers Taiwan as part of its one nation vision. Now, CBS News correspondent Trinity Chavez reports China is starting to conduct military exercises. Taiwan welcomed House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the self-ruled island democracy that China claims as its own. Defying threats from China, she is now the highest ranking American official to visit Taiwan in a quarter of a century. While receiving an honor from Taiwan's president, Pelosi highlighted the decades long U.S. commitment to Taiwan. 43 years ago, with the Taiwan Relations Act, America made a bedrock promise to always stand with Taiwan. The California Democrat also spoke of China's strident opposition to her visit. They will not stand in the way of people coming to Taiwan. It's a show of friendship, of support. China considers visits by foreign officials as a sign of recognition of Taiwan's sovereignty, which China challenges. Across the narrow Taiwan Strait, China responded, announcing new military drills ringing Taiwan. And it warned that the U.S. would pay the price for undermining China's interests. We don't want to see this spiral into any kind of a crisis or conflict. Again, we would say there's no reason to. For Pelosi, making waves with China is nothing new. In 1991, she unfurled a pro-democracy banner in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. And today, before she departs Taiwan, Pelosi is expected to meet with human rights leaders, which could further wrangle China. Trinity Chavez, CBS News, New York. And you are looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning on Capitol Hill. Senators considering legislation to strengthen Taiwan's defense. Now, the Taiwan Policy Act, which has bipartisan support, is expected to be discussed later today by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Now, the bill would bolster Taiwan's defense capabilities with nearly four and a half billion dollars in security assistance over the next four years and provide other supports for Taiwan's democratic government and civil society. Now, the measure would also designate Taiwan as a major non-NATO ally. Well, President Biden says he will sign the burn pit legislation when it reaches his desk. Now, the Senate passed the PACT Act last night. Now, that was after a number of Republicans dropped their opposition following er an early week of delays, outrage and protests. Now, both Idaho Senators Mike Crapo and Jim Risch voted no on the measure. 
Veteran organizations tell CBS News it could impact over 3 million veterans, including those exposed to toxins as far back as the Vietnam War. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, school is back in session in less than a month, if you can believe it. And that's why CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're teaming up to host a back to school drive. We want to help local families get ready for the school year. CBS2's Vasily Varlamos, he's live at CUNA CapEd Credit Union, where you can donate today. And he has more on our supply drive. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning. Yeah, I'm here live on North Meridian Road here in CUNA at the Cap Ed Credit Union where they will be collecting supplies for kids this upcoming school year. Now, these donations will go to the Salvation Army to help their families get their kids ready to learn. We know times are tough right now for Idahoans. In a study done by the National Retail Fed Federation, 38% of consumers are cutting back on spending areas to cover the cost of items for this upcoming school year. We're looking for things like pencils, backpacks, pens, binders, notebooks, crayons, anything kids may need for this upcoming school year. Now, you can donate at any Cap Ed Credit Union location until August 12th. You can also donate money online if you cannot make it to a store to pick up school supplies. We also have links on our website to help out on IdahoNews.com. Now, for heading out the door this morning, we should see temperatures rise fairly quickly. By 11 a.m., it'll be 84 degrees. That'll jump up to 89 degrees by 1 p.m., leading to our high today of 97 degrees as the high. Now, smoke will continue to be moderate Wednesday morning. We should see by uh, it's moving east by Thursday morning, bringing the level to low here in the Treasure Valley. Now, by Thursday evening, that smoke, smoke should be completely out out of the Treasure Valley. If not, it'll be a very low amount of smoke here in the Treasure Valley. Now highs for today, 97 degrees expected as the high here in Boise, 97 in Mountain Home as well, 98 degrees over in Emmett, and 100 degrees over in Ontario. That's why we're seeing the lone triple digit numbers here in the Treasure Valley. And then over in the mountains, 86 in McCall, 82 degrees in Stanley, and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Now for your extended forecast, we will see temperatures start to drop heading into the week weekend, but 97 on Wednesday and 99 on Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday will be at 93 degrees. But once we head into early next week, we'll start to see temperatures soar 97 degrees on Sunday and then 100 degrees on Monday and Tuesday. Now over in the mountains, 87 degrees on Wednesday, we'll start to see it drop heading into the weekend, 83 degrees on Friday and 83 degrees on Saturday. But heading into early next week, we'll also see it jump up 91 on Monday and 91 on Tuesday. Thank you, Vasily. It is 519 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. It is looking good. Everything rolling along smoothly for this Wednesday. But when you do get in the car, you want to make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, the White House launching a Muggy Pox response team how they hope to help manage growing cases. Plus, Idaho reporting fewer monkeypox cases, the error at the Idaho State Lab, and how they're now calling for correction. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 523. The White House stepping up efforts today to stop the spread of monkeypox virus. They've launched a monkeypox response team to provide more resources nationwide. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus explains what that means. Hey there, hello to you. This team, all an effort to try and curb this outbreak. Monkeypox hitting nearly 6,000 cases in the U.S. so far and is now in 48 states, including Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. The same disaster relief workers for everything from bad weather to coronavirus now taking on monkeypox. The head guy to stop the spread, Robert Fenton, an administrator with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA as it's known. 
The CDC's head of HIV prevention also helping in the response. Here's why. Currently, what we're seeing in the United States is that the population most affected right now is men who have sex with men. Because of that, here's what we all need to know. Monkeypox is spread through close, intimate, skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone who has monkeypox. So the chances of you just going into the community today and getting monkeypox remain extremely low. But here's why the White House is also stepping up efforts today to expand vaccine availability and testing. You know, it's really concerning. I think the opportunity to have contained this virus may have been lost. As Dr. Thomas Lamar told me, that may be true. Look at this CDC map. Three states now declaring a medical state of emergency. They have nearly half of those 6,000 cases. Illinois has 520. California, 827. New York, the epicenter, nearly 1,400. We estimate that we have up to 150,000 people here in New York City who might be at risk for getting or transmitting monkeypox under the current criteria for vaccination. So we have work to do to get to that number. The concern, of course, is that this virus will spread beyond the gay and bisexual community. Four children have already tested positive for the virus. It's a pretty miserable infection. Uh, fortunately, it's not nearly as contagious as COVID-19, but it makes people feel terrible. About one in 10 who do get this virus will be hospitalized because of the pain and isolate from others. In most cases, however, it does resolve on its own. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. The vaccine given for monkeypox, it's the small box vaccine. The two viruses are closely related. According to the CDC, it's about 85% effective at protecting against monkeypox. Well, two possible cases of monkeypox in Idaho are misdiagnosed. The error was found yesterday. The Idaho Bureau of Laboratories was shut down while they investigated. It turns out it was an error in handling. With a problem figured out, testing at the lab did resume yesterday. Well, cases of tick-borne illness increasing, according to the Centers for Disease Control. Now, officials say Powassan virus is becoming more common. Now, a Pennsylvania boy recovered after spending two weeks in intensive care. Now, he was diagnosed with meningocephalitis after contracting the virus. Meningitis means a covering of the brain gets inflamed, and encephalitis means the brain cells themselves can get, get inflamed. And this virus can cause both. Dr. Sawafi Gotham says with no proven treatments, care usually it includes fluids, oxygen, and seizure medications. She says to avoid the virus, preventing tick bites is key. Use insect repellent and check your body and clothing for ticks when you've been outdoors. Still to come on CBS 2 News, the DOJ suing the state of Idaho. Why they say one of Idaho's abortion laws goes against federal law. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After all of your favorites, you can join Brent Hunsaker, Janae Ryan, and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question is, Americans, they purchase 2 billion of these each year, and not a single one will be recycled. What are they? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the Idaho Supreme Court has a big day ahead. The arguments over abortion related lawsuits they're set to hear today. Plus the state fighting against fentanyl. What officials in Idaho are doing to curb rising overdose deaths. Plus helping kids get back to school on the right foot. You're looking at CapEd Credit Union branch in CUNA. How you can help local families get ready for the school year. CBS 2 News this morning starts now. Well, temperatures are definitely a bit milder this morning. We are looking at 69 degrees here in Boise. Over in Mountain Home, it is 67 degrees there, 64 degrees in Caldwell, and around 65 degrees in Ontario. And then up in the mountains, 56 degrees in McCall. Now today in Boise, we're looking at a high of 97 degrees. We'll see mostly sunny skies, as well as the smoke on its way out of the Treasure Valley. That is headed east, and then we'll pop 
possibly see some late spot showers as well. Now, we, for future cast shown us, we will see some clouds rolling in Wednesday evening. We'll see a few spot showers in eastern Oregon, and then those clouds will roll in Thursday morning and stick around into the evening. Now, high temperatures for today, 97 degrees over in Boise, 97 in Mountain Home as well, 98 in Emmett, 100 degrees in Ontario, and 86 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. It is 531 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, no reports of anything to slow you down this morning. This is a live look of I-84. As you can see, everything is moving on along. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, attorneys for Planned Parenthood will go before the Idaho Supreme Court later this morning over two abortion related lawsuits filed over the past several months. Now, in March, the organization sued over Idaho's newest anti abortion law. Now, that law allows relatives of any woman who seeks an abortion to sue the medical provider for that service. Now, the law prohibits rapists from suing, but it does allow the relative of rapists to sue. Now, even though Governor Little did sign the bill, he has voiced concerns publicly about it, including its impact on victims of sexual assault. In June, Planned Parenthood also filed a lawsuit over Idaho's trigger law, which bans nearly all abortions. Now, Idaho passed that law in 2020 on the condition that it would not take effect unless Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, it was triggered by the recent Supreme Court decision and now will go into effect on the 25th of this month. But Planned Parenthood is asking the Idaho Supreme Court to pause that until after its lawsuit works its way through the courts. And last week, Planned Parenthood filed a third lawsuit against the state's fetal heartbeat law that was signed last year, banning abortions after a heartbeat is detected. Now, it makes it a felony for medical professionals to perform an abortion after the six week point. Planned Parenthood wants the state's high court to hear their third lawsuit as well, but at this point, that request has not been granted. And the U.S. Department of Justice also suing Idaho, claiming these abortion trigger laws violate federal law. Now, the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, passed back in 1986, says hospitals must give necessary treatment to a patient before discharging them. And that does include abortion or any emergency care that a woman would seek. Now, that right was reaffirmed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in early July of this year. And stay with us for continued coverage of these legal battles over abortion. Now, today's hearing at the Idaho Supreme Court, it starts at 10 a.m. And we will bring you the latest on air and online at IdahoNews.com. And for breaking news sent straight to your smartphone, you can download the CBS2 mobile app. Fentanyl killing an alarming number of Idahoans. From the law enforcement side, the state, they have a three-pronged approach. Now, one focuses on resources, on going after dealers, the second on education, and the third, diverting people struggling with addiction to treatment services. Now, our own Angela Kernel shows us what the state is doing now to save lives. The state of Idaho lost 152 lives last year to fentanyl, more than three times as many lives lost compared to 2020. We anticipate based on the current numbers, that that number is going to increase again. ISP officers in northern Idaho have started a trial diversion program that we could eventually see more of across the state. Instead of putting a first-time offender struggling with a substance use disorder suspected of a low-level, nonviolent crime in jail, ISP officers will divert that person to treatment services instead. Whenever we're given the opportunity to to give somebody help, to provide them with an opportunity to, to better themselves, uh, it does, you know, it's, it's very gratifying for us. Education efforts have also been ramping up each week and sometimes twice a week. ISP officers in northern Idaho say they're meeting with people in churches and other community centers, as well as kids in schools to warn them about just how pervasive fentanyl is and just how easily it could kill someone. Every day, our troopers around the state are seizing, you know, one or two sometimes, but hundreds uh, more often than not. They're everywhere. Eventually, these talks will be happening in every community throughout the state. We will sit and do these talks with anyone that will sit and listen. 
for 30 minutes to an hour. The state also aggressively going after the dealers once they can directly link to an overdose death. They are tough to do. Most of the cases require us to get an autopsy done, toxicology done, and then direct connection to the person that we believe that are responsible. Those cases oftentimes prosecuted on the federal level. If convicted, that person could face anywhere from 15 to 20 years in prison. When we do work these cases, that we have been very successful in getting not only the cases prosecuted, but also uh, guilty pleas. Turning now to fire season, the Moose Fire, burning over 58,000 acres in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. That's about 17 miles north of Salmon, Idaho. It's sitting at around 20% containment this morning. That is actually down a bit from last containment update. Well, today, Great Basin Team 1 will take management of the fire later this afternoon. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're teaming up to host a back to school drive. It'll be here before we know it, helping local families get ready for our school year. CBS2's Vasily Varlamos, he's live in CUNA at the CapEd Credit Union location where you can donate some back to school supplies. And he's about to tell us more about the back to school drive underway. Vasily, good morning. CBS2 and Cap Ed Credit Union need your help. I'm here at Cap Ed Credit Union in CUNA, and they will be collecting supplies till August 12 for kids in need. Now, these are school supplies, and these donations will go to the Salvation Army to help families get their kids ready to learn. Now, we know times are tough right now for Idahoans. In a study done by the National Retail Federation, the average family with children in K through 12 plans to spend an average of $864 on school items. That's an $168 increase since 2019. We want to ensure that all children have the necessary supplies to succeed in school and we know there is a need for it so that's what we're working towards. We're looking for things like pens, pencils, binders, crayons, notebooks, anything kids may need for the upcoming school year. To donate, you can stop by any CapEd location on, until August 12th. You can also donate money online if you are unable to go to a store to pick up supplies. Now, you can find out ways to donate on IdahoNews.com. Yeah, super easy to do. Go by, say hi. And Vasily, at least this morning, very mild out there. We decided to send you into the elements for your forecast this morning. So what can you tell us about what we're going to expect <laughs> today? Clear skies, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, we can expect some clear skies, but we will see some clouds later this evening. Now, today or around the country, we are also seeing high temperatures, 99 over in Medford, 87 over in Portland, and then over in Northern California, they're still getting hit hard by a heat wave, 106 over in Redding and 103 in Sacramento. And as you can see up in Idaho, 88 in Idaho Falls and 97 degrees here in Boise. Now, over the next few days, we will see mostly sunny skies with a potential for some some spot showers here and there around the valley as well as in the mountains. Lower smoke conditions are also expected. We will see that smoke start to fade east and we will start to see it heat up early next week. Now, future cast shown, we will see those showers start to roll in Wednesday evening as well as those clouds, but we will see low pressure as well up north into the southeast cause higher pressure here and that's why we will see high temperatures not only this upcoming week but as well as in the future. Now high temperatures for today 80 or 97 degrees here in Boise, 98 degrees over in Emmett, 100 degrees over in Ontario. That's the lone triple digit up there. 97 in Mountain Home and then over in the mountains McCall is going to be at 86, Stanley at 82 and Idaho City at 91 degrees. Now for your five day forecast 97 degrees today and we'll see it jump up to 99 degrees on Thursday and then we'll We'll see cooler temperatures heading into the weekend with Sunday being 97 degrees and I'll let you know about the heat up early next week in the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. It is 540 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look along I-84 this morning. We do have a report of a traffic collision. It's on South Eagle Road and East Victory Road, the intersection. Again, we are looking at a traffic collision out on South Eagle Road and East Victory Road. It happened about 20 minutes ago. They still are working on cleanup at this point, but may slow you down by a couple minutes if that is part of your route into the office. 
Again, we'll keep you updated throughout the newscast. But when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is Americans. We purchase two billion of these each year and not a single one will be recycled. You really have to think on this because there are quite a few different things that are recycled. All I can think of are straws, possibly your um, to-go coffee cup in the morning if you don't get a recyclable one. Um, also, uh, plastic utensils. That's one that really grinds my gears sometimes. All right, let's see what the public has to say this morning. Doug says cheese wrappers. Yeah, I was going to say those little, um, I think it's parchment paper or something of the like. Say definitely could be two billion, quite a few. Keep that in mind. Let's see, Kevin says Bic lighters. That's actually a good one. I didn't know that Bic lighters were not recyclable, but definitely possible. Again, two billion of them each and every year, not a one is recycled. Let's see what else. Corey says feminine hygiene products. Yeah, no, that is a good one as well. Keep in mind though, cotton is recyclable, but uh, let's keep thinking on it, guys. Keep those juices flowing this morning. And if you do think you know the answer, we still have about an hour and 15 minutes. You can guess on our Facebook page or our Twitter, and we'll read the answer right before CBS this morning. Creative ideas. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, a mudslide in West Virginia shocking a neighborhood. Why neighbors say they're worried the worst may be yet to come. This is CBS 2 News this morning. I was talking to my dad on the telephone and I heard this loud noise and it just, it was so loud. It was traumatic. Well, in West Virginia, heavy rains caused a major mudslide in the town of Man. That storm destroyed a home, left a family in need of rescue. Now, neighbors say they've been concerned about potential mudslides for quite a while. They say they've dealt with runoff issues from an abandoned mine on the top of a hill as it fills the basement every single time it rains. Now they worry with more rain on the way, this is a sign the entire hillside may give. Now the Department of Environmental Protections says they're looking into the mudslide. Well, the heat's in the West still taking a toll, even as things slightly cool down. In Oregon, 14 people are now suspected to have died from the heat and the Seattle area had six deaths blamed on last week's heat wave. So just a reminder to keep cool, Caldwell, they have designated several cooling sites in the town. They're at Veterans Memorial Park, or Hall, pardon me, City Hall, also the Senior Center and the Public Library. Even the O'Connor Fieldhouse may be added as overflow if there's a lot of demand. Now you can find more information on the cooling centers around the Treasure Valley. We have them on IdahoNews.com. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. School, it'll be back here before we know it. That's why CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're teaming up to host a back to school drive, trying to help local families get ready for the upcoming school year. CBS2's Vasily Varlamos, he's live in CUNA at a CapEd Credit Union locations, one of the areas you can donate for our back to school drive. Good morning, Vasily. Yes, CBS2 and Cap Ed Credit Union are teaming up to help fund care, help kids with their school supplies. Now I'm here on North Meridian Road in CUNA at the Cap Ed Credit Union location where you can donate. Now these donations will go to the Salvation Army to help families get their kids ready to learn. We know times are tough right now for Idahoans. In a study done by the National Retail Federation, 38% of consumers are cutting back on other spending areas to cover the cost of items for the upcoming coming school year. We're looking for things like backpacks, pens, pencils, binders, notebooks, crayons, anything kids may need for the upcoming school year this year. Now, you to donate, you can stop by any Cap Ed locations until August 12th. You can also donate money online if you cannot make it to the store to pick up school supplies. You can donate at any Cap Ed Credit Union location. And to find out more about how you can donate or the locations you can donate, go to IdahoNews.com. Yeah, very easy ways to do it. Again, you could drop off or go online. And we're going to send it back out to Facili again. We're having him do his weather forecast out in the elements this morning where it is really mild. A great start for your morning. Again, we're still waiting on sunrise, 
But once that daytime heating hits, it's going to be toasty. Once again, tell me more, Vasily. Yeah, I'm out here experiencing the elements. It's a beautiful morning out here in CUNA. When you're heading out the door this morning, you'll start to see temperatures start to rise. By 11 a.m., it'll be 84 degrees, jumping up to 89 degrees by 1 p.m., leading to our high today at 5 p.m. of 97 degrees. Now, smoke will continue to be moderate Wednesday morning, but we should see it continue to move east by Thursday morning, bringing the level to low in the Treasure Valley. And by Thursday evening, that smoke should be out of the Treasure Valley area. Now, high temperatures for today over in Boise, it'll be 97 degrees. In Mountain Home, it'll be 97 as well. 98 degrees over in Emmett, and Ontario's looking like the lone triple digit out here today. And then in McCall, 86 degrees expected as the high there, 82 in Stanley, and 91 degrees over in Idaho City. Now for your extended forecast, Wednesday will be 97 as we said, but tomorrow we'll see it jump to 99 degrees. And then heading into the weekend, we'll see temperatures start to drop off a little bit, 93 degrees both on Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday as well, we'll start to jump up into those higher temperatures early next week, 97 on Monday, and then triple digits both on Monday and Tuesday as well. Now over in the mountains, we're, we'll see temperatures start to drop heading into the weekend. Friday will be 83 degrees, same with Saturday, but we'll start to see temperatures ramp up early next week, 87 on Sunday and 91 on Monday and Tuesday. 91. Loving those mountain temperatures. Thank you, Vasily. It is 549 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KVOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything running smoothly on I-84, though we do have a traffic collision. It's out on South Eagle Road, the intersection of South Eagle Road and East Victory Road. If that is part of your commute, again, that will slow you down by a couple minutes. But keep in mind, everything else is looking good. Again, that's a traffic collision out at South Eagle Road and the intersection of East Victory Road out in Meridian. When you do eventually get in the car, you're going to want to make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your morning team traffic updates. Well, today's number of the day, splitting voters practically in half. Now, 49% say when a country runs a trade deficit, that's bad for the economy. Now, Scott Rasmussen National Survey finds less than a tenth think it's a good thing. Now, a fourth of voters say they're unsure, with 18% saying it's neither good nor bad. Still to come on CBS 2 News, struggling hotels to keep hotels are still struggling to keep up with the travel boom, why they're still having a hard time with a shortage of workers. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 553 on your Wednesday. The first cargo ship carrying Ukrainian grain since Russia lost its invasion has arrived in Turkey. Now this cargo ship with more than 26,000 tons of corn and grain on board, it arrived in Istanbul on earlier today. Now the vessel anchored while inspectors boarded it to make sure it was only containing food and that there were no weapons on board. Now the ship's final destination is Lebanon. An estimated 20 million tons of grain have been stuck in Ukraine since the start of the war. Great things to see. Well, hotels seeing guests come back, but they're still trying to handle the boost in business during an ongoing worker shortage. Now, CBS News' Skylar Henry has more from Washington. As travelers continue to hit the road for summer vacations, those working in hotels are adjusting to the rising demand. It's a little bit interesting in that they there's been a shift in the type of business. Tashar Agrawal runs the JW Marriott a few blocks from the White House. During the worst days of the pandemic, guests filled only 5% of the rooms, forcing him to furlough and even lay off a chunk of his staff. Now that guests are filling the rooms again, they have different priorities. I think what we're finding now is even your business travelers are blending their business travel with a little leisure, a bit of leisure travel. And so they're staying an extra night on either end. But not every hotel is adjusting to the changing market. The U.S. Travel Association says the broader leisure and hospitality sector is still down 1.3 million jobs compared to before the pandemic. Where is the biggest void? It was equal across the board between housekeeping, which continues to be a challenge and always was, but even front desk um, in the summer and in the hot resort locations, 
you know, pool staffing and outdoor roles can be hard to fill. Experts fear the lack of staff could impact the quality of a guest's stay. So many hotels are boosting wages and benefits to attract more workers. You know, the reality is if we were back to pre-pandemic numbers, uh, the experience tied to staying in those hotels will not be the same as it was for 2019 for anyone that was traveling simply because hotels don't have the, the, the workers. But Agrawal says he's building back his staff. But we probably have over 20 jobs posted right now. He's optimistic the industry as a whole will remain resilient and bounce back even stronger. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Well, if you are looking for work, there is a job fair happening today in Nampa. Now it's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Nampa Civic Center. They're hosting 60 companies from all across the Treasure Valley. They're hoping to fill over 500 positions. Well, the 125th Western Idaho Fair just around the corner. The fair runs August 19th through the 28th. There'll be FFA and 4-H shows, carnival rides, and of course, fair food. In fact, last week's or last year's winning beer will be served at several vendors on the fairgrounds. And don't forget the concerts. They begin Monday, the 22nd, and continue through closing night on the 26th. Look at all those names, a rundown of the headliners each night. And don't forget the concerts. They're free with your paid admission to the Western Idaho Fair. Now, this year's fair also presents a great opportunity to help give back to our community. Now, in honor of the fair's 125th anniversary, we're asking for donations to the Idaho Food Bank. Now, we've set a goal of raising $125 for 125 people or organizations, and we are almost halfway there. So we were asking you to help us feed hungry Idahoans. It goes right back into the community. There is a link to donate on our website, IdahoNews.com. Still to come on CBS 2 News, the DOJ suing the state of Idaho. We have more on that, as well as House Speaker Pelosi making her trip to Taiwan, why the U.S. is mourning about not visiting the island. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the Idaho Supreme Court has a big day ahead. The arguments over abortion related lawsuits they're set to hear today. Plus the state fighting against fentanyl. What officials in Idaho are doing to help curb rising overdose deaths. And helping kids get back to school on the right foot. You're looking live at CapEd Credit Union in CUNA. How you can help local families get ready for the school year. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. A little peek of some sunrise out there this morning. And of course, Vasily Varlamos joins us with a look at your morning forecast. And Vasily, our smoke looks like it has moved out. Will it stay at bay is the big question on everyone's mind this morning. Yeah, very clear morning this morning. It feels great out here. Temperatures are very mild. We're looking at the low or high 60s to low 70s, pretty much across the Treasure Valley right now. 69 degrees over in Boise and 56 degrees up there in McCall. So pretty much all around, we're sticking to the average around the uh, for temperatures right now, but looking very, very good for today. Now for today, we will see 97 degrees here in Boise, mostly sunny skies expected throughout the day. The smoke is also on its way out of the Treasure Valley that is moving eastbound. And we also may see a possibility of late spot showers in the Treasure Valley area. Now, future cast showing clouds rolling in Wednesday evening with a few spot showers over in Eastern Oregon, but as there is day rolls around we'll see more clouds coming in it'll be a partly cloudy day tomorrow and we'll see these clouds around and then high temperatures for today 97 in Boise and 86 degrees in McCall not too bad thank you Vasily it is 601 on your Wednesday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI we bring you team traffic all morning long a live look at I-84 this morning 
No reports of anything to slow you down on that main way. We do, however, have a traffic collision. It's at the intersection of South Eagle Road and East Victory Road in Meridian. Again, that's South Eagle Road, the intersection at East Victory Road in Meridian may slow you down a little bit out there. Again, we have two responses going on right now. But other than that, when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, attorneys for Planned Parenthood will go before the Idaho Supreme Court later this morning. Now, it's over two abortion related lawsuits filed over the past several months. Now, in March, the organization sued over Idaho's newest anti-abortion law. Now, that law allows relatives of any woman who seeks an abortion to sue the medical provider for that service. Now, the law prohibits rapists from suing, but does allow the relatives of rapists to sue. Now, even though Governor Little signed the bill, he has voiced concerns publicly about it, including its impact on the victims of sexual assault. And in June, Planned Parenthood also filed a lawsuit over Idaho's trigger law, which bans nearly all abortions in the state. Now, Idaho passed this law back in 2020 on the condition that it would not take effect until Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, it was triggered by the recent Supreme Court decision. Now, it will go into effect on the 25th of this month, but Planned Parenthood is asking the Idaho Supreme Court to pause that until after its lawsuit works its way through the courts. And just last week, Planned Parenthood filed a third lawsuit against the state's fetal heartbeat law that was signed last year. It bans abortions after a heartbeat is detected, usually around six weeks, and makes it a felony for medical professionals to perform an abortion after that point. Now, Planned Parenthood wants the state's high court to hear their third lawsuit as well, but at this point, it has not granted that request. And the U.S. Department of Justice also suing Idaho, claiming these abortion trigger laws violate federal law. The Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, passed back in 18, or 1986, pardon me, says hospitals must give necessary treatment to a patient before discharging them, and that does include abortion or any emergency care that a woman would seek. Now, that right was reaffirmed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in early July of this year. And stay with us for continuing coverage of these legal battles over abortion. Today's hearing at the Idaho Supreme Court starts at 10 a.m. sharp, and we will bring you the latest updates both on air and online on IdahoNews.com. And for breaking news sent straight to your smartphone, download the CBS2 mobile app. Well, fentanyl killing an alarming number of Idahoans. From the law enforcement side, the state, they have a three-pronged approach. Now, one focuses on resources going after dealers, the second, education, and the third diverts people struggling with addiction to treatment services. Now, our own Angela Kerndall shows us what the state is doing to try to save lives. The state of Idaho lost 152 lives last year to fentanyl, more than three times as many lives lost compared to 2020. We anticipate based on the current numbers, that that number is going to increase again. ISP officers in northern Idaho have started a trial diversion program that we could eventually see more of across the state. Instead of putting a first-time offender struggling with a substance use disorder suspected of a low-level, nonviolent crime in jail, ISP officers will divert that person to treatment services instead. Whenever we're given the opportunity to to give somebody help, to provide them with an opportunity to better themselves, uh, it does, you know, it's, it's very gratifying for us. Education efforts have also been ramping up each week and sometimes twice a week. ISP officers in northern Idaho say they're meeting with people in churches and other community centers, as well as kids in schools to warn them about just how pervasive fentanyl is and just how easily it could kill someone. Every day, our troopers around the state are seizing, you know, one or two sometimes, but hundreds uh, more often than not. They're everywhere. Eventually, these talks will be happening in every community throughout the state. We will sit and do these talks with anyone that will sit and listen for 30 minutes to an hour. The state also aggressively going after the dealers once they can directly link to an overdose death. They are tough to do. Most of the cases require us to get an autopsy done, toxicology done, and then direct connection to the person that we believe that are responsible. Those cases oftentimes prosecuted on the federal level. If convicted, that person could face anywhere from 15 to 20 years in prison. When we do work these cases, 
that we have been very successful in getting not only the cases prosecuted, but also uh, guilty pleas. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, school, it'll be back in session before we know it. And that's why CapEd and CBS2, we're teaming up to host a back to school drive, helping local families get ready for the school year. And our own CBS2's Vasily Varlamos, he's live in CUNA at the CapEd Credit Union location, one of the areas where you can donate school supplies to tell us more about the drive. Good morning, Vasily. CBS2 and Cap Ed Credit Union are teaming up to help collect things for kids this upcoming school year. Now, you can go to any location here to donate. I'm here at the North Meridian Street branch over in CUNA, and you can donate to any location. Now, these donations will go to the Salvation Army to help families get their kids ready to learn. We know times are tough right now for Idahoans. In a study done by the National Retail Federation, the average family with children in K-12 through plans to spend an average of $864 on school items. That's an $168 difference since 2019. Times are tough right now for everybody, so if parents can breathe a little easier knowing that they have somewhere to go to get their, their kids' supplies and not have to worry about that piece and focus on everything else, I feel that that not only will bring joy, but also peace of mind to a lot of our parents. We're looking for things like pens, backpacks, pencils, binders, notebooks, crayons, anything kids may need for this upcoming school year. Now to donate, you can stop at any Cap Ed Credit Union location till August 12th. You can also donate money online as well if you cannot make it to the store to pick up supplies. Now, for any more information about how you can donate or how you can donate online as well, head to IdahoNews.com. No, thank you, Vasily. Yeah, lots of ways to help local families across the Treasure Valley. And of course, it is about 6.09 a.m. Starting to see that sunrise peak over the building behind you, Vasily. A beautiful start to our morning. What can we expect for the rest of the day? <laughs> Yeah, beautiful start and a beautiful day as well. Temperatures will be going up and they are going up across the country as well. We are saying high temperatures over in Medford, 99 degrees there and 106 over in Redding and 103 in Sacramento. So that Southern Oregon, Northern California region definitely getting hit hard over there. 87 in Portland and as you can see up in Idaho, 88 in Idaho Falls and 97 expected today in Boise. Now over the next few days, we'll see it's mostly sunny with the potential for spot showers here and there across the valley as well as over in the mountains. And we will see lower smoke conditions as well and it'll start to heat up early next week. Now, future cast showing showers will start to roll in Wednesday evening if they do and we'll also see them spot showers just over in Oregon as well as in the mountains. And then low pressure up north and to the southeast of us is causing high pressure in our area which is adding to that heat. Now, high, pre uh, high temperatures across the, uh, across the Treasure Valley in Boise, it'll be 97 degrees. In Emmett, it'll be 98 degrees. Ontario is looking like the lone triple digit up there, 100 degrees in Ontario, and then 86 degrees in McCall, 82 in Stanley, and 91 in Idaho City. Now, the five-day forecast for you, we'll see temperatures rise tomorrow, but they'll drop off heading into the weekend. 93 expected on Friday and Saturday and into Sunday. I'll let you know about the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. All right, I like that. A little up and down. Some relief heading our way. Good news there. It is 610 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, we do have one early crash to look out for. It happened uh, just about an hour ago at Eagle and Victory injury crash. Still have crews on the scene there. And uh, some lane blockage It looks like mainly for southbound Eagle and eastbound Victory. Those two directions. Not any big delays because traffic's so light, but a little heads up on that at Eagle Victory. I-84 moving right along. No early freeway issues or buildups. 184, good as well. Very light. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi making the trip to Taiwan. How China is retaliating after warning the U.S. not to visit the island. Plus, a bill said to help, help our veterans passes the Senate. A look at the PACT Act as it heads to the president's desk. 
And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Only 20% of men do this every day. Yeah, it's actually shocking. The answer, guys, housework, 20%. Come on, guys. All right, now for today's question. Americans purchase 2 billion of these each year and not a single one will be recycled. All right, folks, thinking caps on. What are they? This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.15. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi departed Taiwan early this morning after receiving a warm welcome from government officials, including the nation's president. Now, this trip has riled China, which considers Taiwan part of its one nation vision. Now, CBS News correspondent Trinity Chavez reports China is starting to conduct military exercises. Taiwan welcomed House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the self-ruled island democracy that China claims as its own. Defying threats from China, she is now the highest ranking American official to visit Taiwan in a quarter of a century. While receiving an honor from Taiwan's president, Pelosi highlighted the decades-long U.S. commitment to Taiwan. 43 years ago, with the Taiwan Relations Act, America made a bedrock promise to always stand with Taiwan. The California Democrat also spoke of China's strident opposition to her visit. They will not stand in the way of people coming to Taiwan. That's a show of friendship, of support. China considers visits by foreign officials as a sign of recognition of Taiwan's sovereignty, which China challenges. Across the narrow Taiwan Strait, China responded, announcing new military drills ringing Taiwan. And it warned that the U.S. would pay the price for undermining China's interests. We don't want to see this spiral into any kind of a crisis or conflict. Again, we would say there's no reason to. For Pelosi, making waves with China is nothing new. In 1991, she unfurled a pro-democracy banner in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. And today, before she departs Taiwan, Pelosi is expected to meet with human rights leaders, which could further wrinkle China. Trinity Chavez, CBS News, New York. President Biden says he will sign the burn pit legislation when it eventually reaches his desk. Now, the Senate passed the PACT Act last night after a number of Republicans dropped their opposition following nearly a week of delays, outrage and protests. Now, both Idaho senators Mike Crapo and Jim Risch voted no on the measure. Veterans organizations, they tell CBS News it could impact nearly three million vets including those exposed to toxins as far back as Vietnam. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, school back in session in less than a month, and that's why CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union were teaming up to host a back to school drive. We're trying to help local families get ready for the school year. Our own CBS2's Vasily Varlamos, he's live in CUNE at the CapEd location, one of the places you can donate with more on our effort underway today. Good morning, Vasily. CBS2 and Cap Ed Credit Union are teaming up to help kids in need. I'm here at the North Meridian Street branch in CUNA to show people where they can donate. They can donate at this location or any Cap Ed location as well. And these donations will be taken in by the Salvation Army to help families get their kids ready to learn. We know times are tough right now for Idahoans. In a study done by the National Retail Federation, 38% of consumers are cutting back on other spending areas to cover the cost of items for the upcoming school year. Now we're looking for things like backpacks, pens, pencils, binders, notebooks, crayons. Anything kids may need this upcoming school year. Now to donate, like I said, you can stop by any Cap Ed Credit Union location until August 12th. You can also donate online as well. If you can't make it to the store to pick up any items, you can donate money as well. Now to find out how you can donate or what you can donate, go to IdahoNews.com. No, thank you, Vasily. One thing I keep noticing as we see you out there this morning is that beautiful sunrise behind you. We're seeing clearer skies than yesterday, which is great news. And it's also going to be keeping with a little bit cooler temperatures too. Fingers are crossed. Tell me more. <laughs> 
Yeah, beautiful sunrise right behind me. We're, we're experiencing a gorgeous morning here, and it'll continue to be a great morning as the day goes on. 11 a.m., we'll see temperatures rise to 84 degrees. That'll jump up to 89 degrees by 1 p.m., leading to our high today at 5 p.m. of 97 degrees. Now, smoke will continue to be moderate Wednesday morning, and we should start seeing it move east by Thursday morning, bringing the level of uh, level of smoke here to low in the Treasure Valley. And by Thursday evening, that smoke should be out of the Treasure Valley completely, and we can expect it fully completely by Friday if it sticks around on Thursday. Now, high temperatures over in Boise, 97 degrees here in Boise, 98 or 97 in Mountain Home, 98 over in Emmett, and 100 degrees over in Ontario. McCall will be looking at 86 degrees, 82 over in Stanley, and 91 in Idaho City. Now, in the Treasure Valley, we'll see temperatures start to increase tomorrow at 99 degrees, but it'll start to drop off heading into the weekend, 93 both on Friday and Saturday, and then we'll start to see temperatures really increase Sunday at 97, and then Monday will be in the triple digits at 100 degrees. Now, into the mountains, we'll see temperatures drop heading into the weekend, 86 degrees on Thursday and 83 on Friday and Saturday, and then heading into early next week, we'll see temperatures jump all the way to 91 degrees. Thank you, Vasily. Not too bad. 620 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking? Good morning. Uh, we do have tow trucks on the scene now of a crash that happened a little after 5 this morning at Eagle and Victory. No big delays. Traffic very light in the area, but there has been some lane blockage, mainly for southbound and eastbound traffic there at the intersection. Eagle Victory is something to uh, be aware of. And it looks like uh, 84 are doing great. Yeah, the uh, merge area is still a 10-mile Meridian Road. Other areas checking out real quiet. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, the White House launching a monkeypox response team. How they hope to help manage growing case counts. And Idaho reporting fewer monkeypox cases, the error at the Idaho State Lab, and how they're now calling for correction. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 624. The White House stepping up efforts today to stop the spread of monkeypox virus. They've launched a monkeypox response team to provide more resources across the nation. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus explains just what that means. Hey there, hello to you. This team, all in effort to try and curb this outbreak. Monkeypox hitting nearly 6,000 cases in the U.S. so far and is now in 48 states, including Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. The same disaster relief workers for everything from bad weather to coronavirus now taking on monkeypox. The head guy to stop the spread, Robert Fenton, an administrator with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA as it's known. The CDC's head of HIV prevention also helping in the response. Here's why. Currently what we're seeing in the United States is that the population most affected right now is men who have sex with men. Because of that, here's what we all need to know. Monkeypox is spread through close, intimate skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone who has monkeypox. So the chances of you just going into the community today and getting monkeypox remain extremely low. But here's why the White House is also stepping up efforts today to expand vaccine availability and testing. You know, it's really concerning. I think the opportunity to have contained this virus may have been lost. As Dr. Thomas Lamar told me, that may be true. Look at this CDC map. Three states now declaring a medical state of emergency. They have nearly half of those 6,000 cases. Illinois has 520. California, 827. New York, the epicenter, nearly 1,400. We estimate that we have up to 150,000 people here in New York City who might be at risk for getting or transmitting 
monkeypox under the current criteria for vaccination. So we have work to do to get to that number. The concern, of course, is that this virus will spread beyond the gay and bisexual community. Four children have already tested positive for the virus. It's a pretty miserable infection. Uh, fortunately, it's not nearly as contagious as COVID-19, but it makes people feel terrible. About one in 10 who do get this virus will be hospitalized because of the pain and to isolate from others. In most cases, however, it does resolve on its own. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, two possible cases of monkeypox in Idaho are misdiagnosed. The error found yesterday, the Idaho Bureau of Laboratories was shut down while it was investigated. Well, it turns out there was an error in handling with the problem. Now figured out, they say testing at the lab has resumed. Still to come on CBS 2 News, the DOJ suing the state of Idaho. Why they say one of Idaho's abortion laws goes against federal law. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 News. After all your favorites, join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the Idaho Supreme Court has a big day ahead. The arguments over abortion related lawsuits they're set to hear later today. Plus the state fighting against fentanyl, what officials in Idaho are doing to curb rising overdose deaths. And helping kids get back to school on the right foot. You're looking live at CapEd Credit Union in CUNA, how you can help local families get ready for the school year. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Beautiful morning here in CUNA as well as across the Treasure Valley. We're seeing little to no clouds in the sky and mild temperatures as well. We're seeing about high 60s to low 70s range throughout the Treasure Valley. 69 here in Boise as well as around 68 to 67 over in Caldwell. Up in the mountains we're looking at around the, the we're looking at the high 50s there as well around 56 degrees for McCall right now. Now for today day 97 degrees as the high here in Boise we'll see mostly sunny skies with the smoke on its way out of the Treasure Valley and possible late spot showers as well now future cast showing clouds rolling in Wednesday evening and we see a few spot showers in eastern Oregon as well and those clouds will start rolling in Thursday morning and into the evening as well now high temperatures around the Treasure Valley 97 here in Boise 100 degrees over in Ontario and 86 degrees in McCall Thank you, Vasily. It is 631 on your Wednesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long, a live look along I-84 this morning. Everything looking good on that stretch, but we do have a traffic collision. That's on South Eagle Road, the intersection of South Eagle Road and East Victory Road out in Meridian. We do have a tow truck on scene right now, so may slow you down, though volumes aren't looking too heavy in that area. Just want to keep you informed. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, attorneys for Planned Parenthood will go before the Idaho Supreme Court later this morning. It's over two abortion related lawsuits filed over the past several months. In March, the organization sued over Idaho's newest anti-abortion law. Now that law allows relatives of any woman who seeks an abortion to sue the medical provider for that service. Now the law prohibits rapists from suing, but it does allow the relatives of rapists to sue. Now, even though Governor Little signed the bill, he has voiced concern publicly about it, including the impact on victims of sexual assault. Now in June, Planned Parenthood also filed a lawsuit over Idaho's trigger law. That's the one that bans nearly all abortions. Now Idaho passed this law back in 2020, on the condition that it would not take effect unless Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, it was triggered by the recent Supreme Court decision and now will go into effect on the 25th of this month. But Planned Parenthood is asking the state Supreme Court to pause that until after the lawsuit works its way through the court system. And last week, Planned Parenthood also filed a third lawsuit against the state's fetal heartbeat law that was also signed last year. Now, it bans abortions after a heartbeat is detected that's usually around six weeks, and it also makes a felony for medical professionals to perform an abortion after that six week point. 
Planned Parenthood wants the state's high court to hear this third lawsuit as well, but at this point, it has not granted that request. Well, the U.S. Department of Justice is also suing Idaho, claiming these abortion trigger laws violate federal law. The Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, passed back in 1986, says hospitals must give necessary treatment to a patient before discharging them. That does include abortions or any emergency care a woman would seek. Now, that right was reaffirmed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in early July of this year. Developing news this morning, fentanyl killing an alarming number of Idahoans. Now, from the law enforcement side, the state has a three-pronged approach. Now, one focuses on resources going after dealers. The second is education. And the third diverts people struggling with addiction to treatment services. Now, our own Angela Kerndall shows us what the state is now doing to save lives. The state of Idaho lost 152 lives last year to fentanyl, more than three times as many lives lost compared to 2020. We anticipate, based on the current numbers, that that number is going to increase again. ISP officers in northern Idaho have started a trial diversion program that we could eventually see more of across the state. Instead of putting a first-time offender struggling with a substance use disorder suspected of a low-level, nonviolent crime in jail, ISP officers will divert that person to treatment services instead. Whenever we're given the opportunity to, to give somebody help, to provide them with an opportunity to, to better themselves, uh, it does, you know, it's, it's very gratifying for us. Education efforts have also been ramping up. Each week and sometimes twice a week, ISP officers in northern Idaho say they're meeting with people in churches and other community centers as well as kids in schools to warn them about just how pervasive fentanyl is and just how easily it could kill someone. Every day, our troopers around the state are seizing, you know, one or two sometimes, but hundreds. Uh, more often than not. They're everywhere. Eventually, these talks will be happening in every community throughout the state. We will sit and do these talks with anyone that will sit and listen for 30 minutes to an hour. The state also aggressively going after the dealers, ones they can directly link to an overdose death. They are tough to do. Most of the cases require us to get an autopsy done, toxicology done, and then direct connection to the person that we believe that are responsible. Those cases oftentimes prosecuted on the federal level. If convicted, that person could face anywhere from 15 to 20 years in prison. When we do work these cases, that we have been very successful in getting not only the cases prosecuted, but also uh, guilty pleas. Turning to wildfire season, the Moose Fire now burning over 58,000 acres in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. That's about 17 miles north of Salmon, Idaho. This morning, it's sitting about 20% containment, and that actually is a bit down from the last containment update. Great Basin Team 1 will take over management of the fire later today. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, back to school, almost here. We'll be here before we know it. And that's why CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're teaming up to host a back to school drive. We're helping local families get ready for the upcoming school year. And CBS2's Vasily Varlamos, he's live in q and at CapEd this morning for more on our efforts underway today. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning. Yeah, I am here at the on the North Midi Meridian Road branch here in CUNA to show where you can uh, drop off supplies as well as any other Cap Ed Credit Union location for donation. Now, the Salvation Army will be picking up these donations to help families get their kids ready to learn. Now, we know times are tough right now for Idahoans. In a study done by the National Retail Federation, the average family with children in K through 12 plans to spend an average of $864 on school items. That's an $168 increase since 2019. We want to ensure that all children have the necessary supplies to succeed in school and we know there is a need for it so that's what we're working towards. 
We're looking for things like backpacks, pens, pencils, binders, notebooks, crayons, anything kids may need for the upcoming school year. Now to donate, you can stop by any CapEd Credit Union location until August 12th. If you can't get to the store and can't get supplies, you can also donate money online. Now, if you want to find out how to donate money online or how you can donate supplies, any further information, go to IdahoNews.com. Thank you so much, Vasily. And we're going to send it right back on out to you because, of course, you are out in the elements today feeling pretty nice to kick off your morning. Clearer skies, less smoke moving on in and some good news on the way heading into our weekend. Tell us more. Yeah, we got clear skies out here. It's a beautiful morning over in CUNA. Now, national highs, we're seeing 106 over in Redding and 103 over in Sacramento. So Northern California getting hit with a heat wave as well as Southern Oregon, 99 over in Medford and over in Portland, 87 degrees there. Salt Lake just south of us, 93 degrees. And over in Boise, we're looking at 97 degrees as the high today. Now, over the next few days, we'll see mostly sunny skies with the potential of a few spot showers lower smoke conditions as well as the smoke moves east and hot temperatures early next week. Now, future cast showing we may see some spot showers roll in Wednesday evening as well as some clouds rolling in, but the low pressure up north and to the southeast of us is going to continue to push high pressure into our area, adding to the potential heat we will be seeing over the next few days. Now, high temperatures over in Boise, 97 degrees here. It uh, 98 over in Emmett and 100 degrees over in Ontario, 97 down Mountain Home and over in the mountains, 86 degrees in McCall, 82 degrees in Stanley and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Now over the next five days, we'll see temperatures jump up tomorrow, 99 degrees expected as the high there and then we'll drop down into the weekend, 93 degrees expected on Friday and Saturday and 97 on Sunday. Now for the extended forecast, I'll let you know about that in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. It is 640 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. We do have a report of a stall on east and on the eastbound 84 near Caldwell. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien for some more information in the News Talk Traffic Center. What can you tell us, Ron? Yeah, stall uh, blocking the lane just before you go underneath the Franklin 29 interchange in Caldwell, part of the construction zone, and traffic is stop and go, pretty much uh, tied up solid back to between Centennial Way and 10th Avenue in Caldwell, trying to come east on the freeway there. So if you normally uh, get onto the freeway in that area of uh, Caldwell, well, heads up as you get ready to get out the door now. Tow truck last check was on the way to get that cleared, so... Uh, hopefully get it taken care of soon. Other than that, we're doing okay. There's been just a little bit of crowding at uh, the Meridian Interchange on I-84. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question, Americans, they purchase 6 billion of these each year and not a single one will be recycled. All right, the first thing I can think, single-use plastics. Number one, um, like your, whatever, your plastic, your forks, your spoons, that sort of thing. Um, we had a really good guess last hour, Bic lighters possibly. I thought that one was a really good one as well. Let's see what you at home are guessing. Kara says diapers. That is a great guess, Kara. Yes, I was gonna say all those out there who are using, of course, non-cloth diapers. Yeah, you don't. Want to reuse those? Ooh, all right. Jeff says toothpicks. Another one you might not want to reuse. Makes sense. Let's see what else we have from people out there this morning. Now, again, it's about 2 billion of them. Lisa says batteries. Yeah, these are some good guesses, guys. We're getting real creative out there. Again, we will reveal the answer coming up at the end of the show, but you still have about 15 minutes to guess. If you don't like any of these answers, you think you know it, still get that answer in. Of course, we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, a mudslide in West Virginia shocking a neighborhood. Why neighbors say they're worried the worst may yet be to come. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. I was talking to my dad on the telephone and I heard this loud noise and it just, it was so loud, it was traumatic. 
In West Virginia, heavy rains caused a major mudslide in the town of Man. Now the storm destroyed a home and left a family in need of rescue. Neighbors say they've been concerned about potential mudslides for a while. They say they've dealt with runoff issues from an abandoned mine on the top of the hill. It actually fills their basement every time it rains, and they worry with more rain on the way that this may be a sign the entire hillside may eventually give. The Department of Environmental Protection says they're looking into that mudslide. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're teaming up to host a back to school drive. We're helping local families get ready for the school year. Now, CBS2's Vasily Varlamos, he's live in CUNIT. CapEd Credit Union this morning, one of the places you can donate with more on our efforts underway today. Good morning, Vasily. Yeah, CVS2 and CapEd Credit Union are teaming up to collect supplies for students this upcoming school year. Now, I am here at CapEd Credit Union on North Meridian Road here in CUNA, which is one of the locations where you can donate. Now, these donations will be made to the Salvation Army, and they will be getting these donations out to kids ready to learn. We know times are tough right now for Idahoans. In a study done by the National Retail Federation, 38% of consumers are cutting back on other spending areas to cut cover the cost of items for this upcoming school year. Now we're looking for pens, pencils, backpacks, binders, notebooks, crayons, anything kids may need for this upcoming school year. Now you can make those donations by at any Cap Ed Credit Union location until August 12th. You can also donate money online if you can't stop by the store and go get supplies. Now if you want to find out how you can donate money or how you can donate supplies, head to IdahoNews.com. Thank you, Vasily. So many easy ways to donate, of course, with school being on the horizon. And we're sending it back out to you because, of course, you have the weather for us. And it's looking pretty good for a kickoff to your morning if you're heading out the door right now. Lots of sunny skies ahead and even a little bit of that cool down we saw yesterday is expected to hang on, right? Yeah, temperatures are great out here this morning and we'll see them continuing to heat up as the day goes on. By 11 a.m. it'll be 84 degrees. That'll jump up to 89 degrees by 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 97 degrees by 5 p.m. Now that smoke continues to be moderate Wednesday morning but it should start running east by Thursday morning bringing the level to low here in the Treasure Valley and by Thursday evening that sh smoke should be out of the area and if not by Thursday night, it should be out by Friday morning. Now, high temperatures here in Boise, 97 degrees as the high, 97 in Mountain Home as well, 98 degrees over in Emmett, and 100 degrees over in Ontario. Now, up in the mountains, 86 degrees over in McCall, 82 degrees in Stanley, and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Now for your extended forecast, in the Treasure Valley, we'll see temperatures jump up tomorrow, but they'll subside a little bit heading into Friday and Saturday, 93 degrees on both of those days, but we'll start to heat up as we go into early next week. Sunday's going to be 97 degrees, and we'll experience triple digit temperatures on Monday and Tuesday. Now over in the mountains, we'll see temperatures drop as well heading into the week weekend 86 tomorrow and 83 on Friday and Saturday and then heading into early next week we'll see temperatures jump up as well. Yeah, look at picture perfect up in the mountains. Thank you Vasily. It is 649 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring in team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning Ron. How's it going? Well, good morning. Uh, we've got a stall uh, being worked on. Tow truck there, I-84 eastbound, Franklin 29 interchange, just before you go underneath that uh, Franklin overpass in Caldwell, and delays back to right before the 10th Avenue interchange. Been backing things up just over a mile, but uh, pretty solid through that area, and uh, hopefully that uh, tow will have it out of the way here soon. Further in, 84, not much going. There's been a little bit of merge slowing at Meridian Road, pretty minimal. And a little lined up traffic trying to get on at the freeway there at the Meridian on ramp at times, that long ramp. And that is about it. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, hotels struggling to keep up with the travel boom. Why they're still having a hard time with worker shortage.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 6.52. The first cargo ship carrying Ukrainian grain since Russia launched its invasion has arrived in Turkey. Now, this cargo ship with more than 26,000 tons of corn and grain on board, it arrived in Istanbul this morning. The vessel anchored while inspectors boarded it to make sure it only contained food and that there were no weapons on board. Now, the ship's final destination is Lebanon. An estimated 20 million tons of grain have been stuck in Ukraine since the start of the war. Well, hotels seeing guests coming back, but they're still trying to handle the boost in business during an ongoing worker shortage. CBS News' Skylar Henry has more from Washington. As travelers continue to hit the road for summer vacations, those working in hotels are adjusting to the rising demand. It's a little bit interesting in that they, there's been a shift in the type of business. Tashar Agrawal runs the JW Marriott a few blocks from the White House. During the worst days of the pandemic, guests filled only 5% of the rooms, forcing him to furlough and even lay off a chunk of his staff. Now that guests are filling the rooms again, they have different priorities. I think what we're finding now is even your business travelers are blending their business travel with a little leisure, a bit of leisure travel. And so they're staying an extra night on either end. But not every hotel is adjusting to the changing market. The U.S. Travel Association says the broader leisure and hospitality sector is still down 1.3 million jobs compared to before the pandemic. Where is the biggest void? It was equal across the board between housekeeping, which continues to be a challenge and always was, but even front desk um, in the summer and in the hot resort locations, you know, pool staffing and outdoor roles can be hard to fill. Experts fear the lack of staff could impact the quality of a guest's stay. So many hotels are boosting wages and benefits to attract more workers. You know, the reality is if we were back to pre-pandemic numbers, uh, the experience tied to staying in those hotels will not be the same as it was for 2019 for anyone that was traveling simply because hotels don't have the, the, the workers. But Agrawal says he's building back his staff. But we probably have over 20 jobs posted right now. He's optimistic the industry as a whole will remain resilient and bounce back even stronger. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Well, if you are looking for work, a job fair happening today in Nampa. That fair is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Nampa Civic Center. They'll host 60 companies from all across the Treasure Valley. They say they're hoping to fill over 500 positions. And the 125th Western Idaho Fair just around the corner. The fair, it runs August 19th through the 28th. There'll be FFA and fair 4-H shows, carnival rides, and of course, fair food. In fact, last year's winning beer will be served at several vendors on the fairgrounds. And don't forget my favorite, it's the concerts. They begin Monday the 22nd and continue through closing night on the 26th. You can see a rundown of the headliners on each and every night. And don't forget those concerts. They're free with your paid admission to the Western Idaho Fair. And this year's fair also presenting a great opportunity to give back to our community. Now, in honor of the fair's anniversary, we're setting a goal to raise $125 from 125 people and organizations. We are almost halfway there. There is a link to donate on our website, IdahoNews.com. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question, Americans purchase 2 billion of these each year and not a single one will be recycled. All right, that answer is disposable razors. It's a good guess, guys. All right. I hope you have a great morning ahead. We'll see you back here at 11 a.m. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.